What I find kind of fascinating about this is that we are effectively building a synthetic animal from the ground up. So the car can be thought of as an animal. It moves around, it senses the environment, and uh, you know, acts autonomously and intelligently. And we are building all of the components from scratch in-house. So we are building, of course, all of the mechanical components of the body, the nervous system, which is all of the electrical components, and for our purposes, the brain of the autopilot. And specifically for this section, the synthetic visual cortex. Hey, I'm Steven, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. And if you haven't heard, shout out to the Tesla Q Dum Dums. Tesla is just a car company. In today's video, we're gonna be hearing from Tesla's director of AI, the GOAT himself, Andre Kapathy, describing how Tesla is effectively creating a synthetic animal. Now, I suspect the majority of people watching today's video won't have a super deep and comprehensive understanding of neuroscience and how the brain works, not just human brains, but brains in life on Earth in general. If you'd like to brush up and learn a little bit more, check out the link in the description to my top 100 or so books. There's a ton of brain-related books in that list. You can listen to most of them for free with an Audible trial. If you own Tesla stock and you want a thorough understanding of the company, you must educate yourself about the brain. But relax, you won't need to have a thorough understanding of neuroscience to really get the gist of this video. As you guys will know, I personally believe that Tesla's AI day was far and away the most important event in the history of the company. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I believe is the most important takeaway from the entire event that everyone seems to have missed. So with that said, let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account. And if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously. Free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. So uh, what, what we want to uh, show today is that uh, Tesla is uh, much more than an electric car company, uh, that we have uh, deep AI activity uh, in um, hard hardware on the inference level, on the training level, um, and, uh, and basically, we, we, I, think we're, I think arguably the leaders in real world AI as it applies to the real world. So as we know, words matter, and this is a colossally important statement from Elon Musk. Elon isn't suggesting that Tesla is doing some AI work, they're making some AI progress. He's talking about them being a leader in real world artificial intelligence today. Not becoming a leader, already a leader. But please, please, whatever you do, don't tell the legacy automakers, don't tell the Wall Street stock analysts, don't tell the mainstream media, don't tell the self-hating basement dwelling adult virgins currently shorting Tesla stock. Let's just keep this as our little secret. And now over to Andre Kapathy to explain exactly why Tesla is currently a leader in real world artificial intelligence. What I find kind of fascinating about this is that we are effectively building a synthetic animal from the ground up. So the car can be thought of as an animal. It moves around, it senses the environment and, uh, you know, acts autonomously and intelligently. Ooh, sorry guys, um, that's really awkward. My bad, I probably should have thought to wear pants before I started recording this video. Let's try that again. What I find kind of fascinating about this is that we are effectively building a synthetic animal from the ground up. So the car can be thought of as an animal. It moves around, it senses the environment and uh, you know acts autonomously and intelligently. And we are building all of the components from scratch in-house. So we are building, of course, all of the mechanical components of the body, the nervous system, which is all of the electrical components, and for our purposes, the brain of the autopilot, and specifically for this section, the synthetic visual cortex. Now, this is really important to understand, and it has far-reaching implications well beyond Tesla's full self-driving software. As we heard at Tesla's AI Day, they announced a humanoid robot in the works. This is the next evolution of Tesla's synthetic animal. What Andre is describing here isn't just a cool piece of software that can drive a car. Tesla are literally putting together the building blocks of what is effectively an artificial life form. 
everything from the mechanical, how it actually moves through the environment to a synthetic nervous system, the electronics, to the brain, and in particular, a synthetic visual cortex. Now, I know there's gonna be a few poindexters in the comments ready to say, but Steven, it can't self-replicate, it's not a life form. Now, I totally understand where you're coming from here. I'm not suggesting that Tesla has literally created a new life form. What I'm suggesting is Tesla's doing something incredible, innovative, at a scale and complexity that has never been done before that will blur the line between synthetic and organic animal. This synthetic animal will be locomoting through its natural environment, moving through the physical world, seeing, observing, sensing, planning, acting, understanding, recognizing, learning from past experiences and improving over time. So for those of you who don't currently think the earth is 6,000 years old, <laughs> by the way, if you do, what a fucking idiot. The way to think about this, this is like the very first multicellular organisms on planet earth. Over time, this synthetic animal is going to evolve and become more complex and more capable in the real world. Now, call me crazy, certainly wouldn't be the first time here, but I have a suspicion that Tesla is in the early stages of laying out a roadmap for developing artificial general intelligence. And when I'm talking about artificial intelligence, I'm not talking about the artificial intelligence demonstrated by Tesla Q. I'm talking about artificial general intelligence that is beyond human level in terms of capability. Tesla's full self-driving software begins with visual intelligence, perceiving, recognizing, interacting with the physical environment. That then goes into a whole other dimension with Tesla's humanoid robots, which are not just existing in flatland in two dimensions, forward, backward, left, right, that's all they can really do. Tesla's humanoid robots will be manipulating the environment in three dimensions and interacting in a much more complex way with human-like hands. Just in case any of you are wondering what artificial general intelligence is, I quote Wikipedia. Artificial general intelligence, or AGI, is the hypothetical ability of an intelligent agent to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. And now let's look at some of the characteristics. There is wide agreement among artificial intelligence researchers that intelligence is required to do the following. Reason, use strategy, solve puzzles, and make judgments under uncertainty. Represent knowledge, including common sense knowledge. Plan learn, communicate in natural language, and integrate all these skills toward common goals. Other important capabilities include the ability to sense, e.g. see, and the ability to act, e.g. move and manipulate objects in the world where intelligent behavior is to be observed. So take a moment or two to let the implications of that sink in. Maybe even rewind the video, look through those characteristics of artificial general intelligence and ask yourself the question, what is Tesla's full self-driving software already capable of doing today? What will Tesla's humanoid robots be capable of doing in the future? And then cast your mind into the future and imagine the long-term implications. So guys, are you ready? Spoiler alert, you heard it here first. Tesla is currently developing the building blocks of what will ultimately become artificial general intelligence. Now, obviously this isn't Tesla's currently stated goal, but all the pieces of the puzzle are falling together here. Tesla is doing some of the most critical and foundational work to developing artificial general intelligence in their efforts to solve autonomy, and then ultimately to deploy that autonomous software into humanoid robots in the real world. So feel free to set a reminder to check back in on this prediction in a few decades time. My prediction is that what Tesla are doing with Tesla Vision that includes perception, planning, and action is the single most important building block in developing artificial general intelligence. So with that in mind, let's see how capable and competent Tesla Vision is today. So here are some of the results. So on the left, we are seeing what we had before, and on the right, we're now seeing significantly improved predictions coming directly out of the neural net. This is a multi-camera network predicting directly in vector space, and you can see that it's basically night and day. Uh, you can actually drive on this. And uh, this took some time and some engineering and incredible work from the AI team uh, to actually get this to work and deploy and make it efficient in the car. Okay, so at this point we have multi-camera networks and they're giving predictions directly in vector space, but we are still operating at every single instant in time completely independently. So very quickly we discovered that there's a large number of predictions we want to make that actually require the video context and we need to somehow figure out how to feed this into the net. So in particular, is this car parked or not? Is it moving? How fast is it moving? Is it still there even though it's temporarily occluded? Or for example, if I'm trying to predict the road geometry ahead, uh, it's very helpful to know if the signs or the road markings that I saw 50 meters ago. So here's a cartoon diagram illustrating some of the challenges here. There's going to be a, the ego car is coming from the bottom and coming up to this intersection here, and then traffic is going to start crossing in front of us, and it's going to temporarily start occluding some of the cars ahead. And then we're going to be stuck at this intersection for a while and just waiting our turn. This is something that happens all the time and is a cartoon representation of some of the challenges here. So number one, with respect to the feature queue and when we want to push into a queue, 
Obviously, we'd like to have some kind of a time-based queue where, for example, we enter the features into the queue, say, every 27 milliseconds. And so if a car gets temporarily occluded, then the neural network now has the power to, be, to look and reference the memory in time and, and learn the association that, hey, even though this thing looks occluded right now, there's a record of it in my previous features, and I can use this to still make a detection. So that's kind of like the more obvious one, but the one that we also discovered is necessary in our case is, for example, suppose you're trying to make predictions about the road surface and the road geometry ahead, and you're trying to predict that I'm in a turning lane and the lane next to us is going straight. Then it's really necessary to know about the line markings and the signs, and sometimes they occur a long time ago. And so if you only have a time-based queue, you may forget the features while you're waiting at your red light. So in addition to a time-based queue, we also have a space-based queue. So we push every time the car travels a certain fixed distance. So some of these details actually can matter quite a bit. And so in this case, we have a time-based queue and a space-based queue to, feed, to cache our features, and that continues into the video module. Here, what I'm going to show you is the car driving around, and we're looking at the hidden state of this RNN. Um, and these are different channels in the hidden state. So you can see that this is after optimization and training this neural net. You can see that some of the channels are keeping track of different aspects of the road. Like for example, the centers of the road, the edges, the lines, uh, the road surface, and so on. Here's another cool video of this. Uh, so this is looking at the mean of the first 10 channels in the hidden state for different uh, traversals of different intersections. And all I want you to see basically is that there's cool activity <laughs> as the recurrent neural network is keeping track of what's happening at any point in time. And you can imagine that we've now given the power to the neural network to actually selectively read and write to this memory. So for example, if there's a car right next to us and is occluding some parts of the road, then now the network has, a, has the ability to not write to those locations. But when the car goes away and we have a really good view, then the recurrent neural, neural net can say, okay, we have very clear visibility. We definitely wanna write information about what's in that part of space. Here's a few predictions that show um, what this looks like. So here we are making predictions about the road boundaries in red, intersection areas in blue, um, road centers, and so on. So we're only showing a few of the predictions here just to keep the visualization clean. Um, and yeah, this is, this is done by the spatial uh, RNN. And this is only showing a single clip, a single traversal. So I just wanted to jump in here and emphasize what incredibly intelligent behavior we're seeing here. This is the same thing that our own brains do when we enter a new environment. Our brain has all sorts of different things it's looking for. Is that an edge? Is that a texture? Blah, blah, blah. It's categorizing things, trying to figure out what it's seeing in its environment. This is the same thing that we do when we're driving. Oh, that's an intersection. That's the edge of the road. That's a curve. That's a line, blah, blah, blah. We are seeing the exact same process happening now in Tesla's synthetic visual cortex, their artificial animal. This is the single most stunning thing that I saw at Tesla's AI day. It's almost like we're peering inside a human brain and seeing exactly the same process that goes on when a human drives to a road for the very first time. I cannot emphasize how mind blowing this is. Elon Musk was right. Tesla is a leader in real world AI today. This is mind blowing stuff. If you know, you know, and if you don't, if this is going a little bit above your head, you can't really understand what's so special, just refer back to the eggplant earlier in this video. But you can imagine there could be multiple trips through here and basically a number of cars, a number of clips could be collaborating to build this map, basically and effectively an HD map, except it's not in the space of explicit items, it's in a space of features of a recurrent neural network, which is kind of cool, I haven't seen that before. To make a relatable example here, just imagine that you are driving a road for the very first time, but then you drive that same road a few more times, you realize, oh, there's a pothole here, there's poor visibility here, sometimes people cut through this intersection here. You start to build up a bit of a picture from the history of driving through that environment. This is the same thing that Andre is talking about here. You remember some general features of the environment that can be useful when you pass through again, AKA you learn and remember. I refer you back to the characteristics of artificial general intelligence. So here's putting everything together. Uh, this is what our architecture roughly looks like today. So um, we have raw images feeding on the bottom. They go through a rectification layer to correct for camera calibration and put everything into a common uh, virtual camera. We pass them through uh, regnets, residual networks, to process them into a number of features at different scales. We fuse the multi-scale information with BIFPN. This goes through a transformer module to re-represent it into the vector space and the output space. This feeds into a feature queue in time or space that gets processed by a video module like the spatial RNN and then continues into the branching structure of the hydronet with trunks and heads for all the different tasks. 
And so that's the architecture roughly what it looks like today. And on the right, you are seeing some of its predictions uh, sort of visualized both in a top-down vector space and also in images. Um, so definitely, uh, this architecture has definitely complexified from just a very simple image-based single network about three or four years ago and continues to evolve. Um, it's definitely quite impressive now. There's still opportunities for improvements that the team is actively working on. For example, you'll notice that our fusion of time and space is fairly late in neural network terms. So maybe we can actually do earlier fusion of space or time and do, for example, cost volumes or optical flow-like networks on the bottom. And once again, I want to emphasize what we are seeing here is unequivocally intelligence. This isn't just some fancy software. This is legitimate intelligence. Tesla really has developed a synthetic visual cortex and a synthetic animal that's able to recognize, perceive, plan, and act in its environment. Tesla Vision is genuinely perceiving and understanding. This isn't just a party trick. If you guys look at the graphic on screen right now, we've already covered what's happening in the top of the screen. But if you look at the different layers of the camera stacks below, that first row there is showing edges, edge detection, something our own brains do. The next layer there is showing object detection. You can see objects. There's signs that are in green. There's cars that are in a deep blue sort of purple. There's the road that's in a lighter shade as well. And then the final row there is depth perception. Again, don't need any radar. There's no radar. There's no LiDAR working here. This is just pure vision and we can see that the darker something is the further away the lighter it is the closer it is this is genuine intelligence and as i said earlier in the video despite the fact that tesla doesn't have a stated goal of developing artificial general intelligence i believe that tesla vision is going to be the biggest and most fundamental building block to ultimately achieving that goal so in summary i guess i just wanted to let you guys and girls know what's around the corner and by around the corner i mean a decade or two or maybe even three into the future because at this point in time i haven't seen anyone else talking about this there was so much mind-blowing news so many incredible things shown at tesla's ai day that i think this may have just slipped under the radar and here's the thing about artificial general intelligence it doesn't stop at human level something to ponder let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you think that Tesla is ultimately on the path to being the first company on the planet to develop artificial general intelligence? And what are the long-term implications? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know i read all your comments p.s if you're still watching you're awesome if you'd like early access exclusive videos regular q a's our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again